Hi guys, so we're at the McKenna Castle and out there you can see the, the sea and the cliffs, I hope you can pick that up. Um, so I've just left the graveyard and the gentleman that was caretaker of the graveyard sent us up here. So it's actually on private farmland and he gave us the all, all clear to come up and have a look and I couldn't resist. Look at that. And it's completely surrounded by ocean and cliffs. And it's just amazing. Um, he gave me information on the castle. So I put all that over the video. But uh, he told me it is haunted and it being Friday the 13th. What else would you be doing? Ardmore Castle, Ardmore Castle was reputed to be one of the most haunted houses in Ireland. One of the owners, the young Richard Coston, apparently met his death in a riding accident at the cliff tops near the house. His ghost is one of the numerous spectres that still reputedly haunt the house. Another owner, a tyrannical landlord, murdered and buried one of his servants under the dining room floor, while a more recent owner apparently could never get some loose steps on one of the staircases to stay fastened down. This led to the gruesome discovery of a child's body found beneath them. One of the earliest owners was James Fitzgerald and is recorded in the Civil Survey 1654-1656. In the early 17th century, there was a family by the name of Coster and later that century, Sir Francis Pendergast resided there. The house was later acquired by Marshal McMahon, President and Marshal of France, in 1873. It is not fully clear how it came into the ownership of Sir Joseph McKenna, but is thought that he acquired it from the National Bank, of which he was a director. He is said to have added the curtain wall and tower, plus an extravagant mausoleum for his wife and himself. He was laid to rest there in 1906, and the house was then taken by his son Joseph who apparently lived there until sometime during World War I, after which the house was abandoned. Sir Joseph McKenna died in 1906. He had remarried and his second wife, Lady McKenna, died in July 1907. Both were buried in a vault in an adjoining field with a large stone angel on guard. Now the place is covered with briars. Lady McKenna has been noted for her dedication to the prevention of cruelty to animals and the family was always resentful of the fact that the society got most of the McKenna money. Sir Joseph McKenna had ten children, six girls and four boys from his first marriage. One of his daughters married a grandson of Daniel O'Connell. Another daughter, Magdalene Mary, aged just 13, is buried in Ardmore Graveyard. For a period in 1920 to 21, it was let during the summer to the committee of Colosta Duglan. There was no caretaker and the place was looted. Eventually sold and deprived of its roof, so the final period of desolation began. I'm glad to say on my visit, I didn't encounter any ghosts. This place was once a hive of activity, parties, marriages, births and deaths. The views are magnificent, the place silent. There is a mausoleum in the grounds which was regarded as the final touch of macabre fantasy. Looking through a broken window at the tombs of the McKenna's, Guarding it is an almost life-sized marble angel, comfortable and homely looking, as though resting after having eaten a picnic lunch, a most surprising apparition amongst the briars and nettles by the side of the field.
the angel remains lost in the undergrowth of the house, with its ghosts and its memories. It took me quite a while to find the mausoleum, but I did find it. Right guys, so I've just come away from the castle, just there, and it's the side of the road up from the castle. We're in uh, a mausoleum, a vault I suppose, and this is the mausoleum, you probably can't see there with the sun. If you come down along, I hope you can hear me now with this wind, if you come down along um, there's this beautiful statue. It's not gorgeous. Of an angel. It says this monument is erected in deepest love by his wife, Amelia. Annie, my life is like a broken stair winding round a ruined tower and leaning nowhere, sorry, leading nowhere. Love, what a volume in four words, an ocean in a tear, a seventh heaven in a glance, a whirlwind in a sigh. See what a grace was seated on this brow, the front of love himself. An eye like Mars to threaten and command, a station like the Herald's Mercury, new light and lighted on a heaven. Kissing hill, a combination than a form indeed, where every god did seem to set his seal, to give the world assurance of a man. This was your husband. And that's by actual William Shakespeare. Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. And we have Tennyson's and Martin Turrer, I think it is all, I suppose, poems from different poets. But unfortunately, I can see that there has been some damage done to her foot and to her arm. But it is absolutely beautiful. And the scenery around here is just stunning. But we come to the side of the mausoleum and you can see that more damage has been done and I think it's just over time really more than anything but you can see in here then we actually have two coffins and the lead has come away from the, the coffin itself And I'm just going to shine a little bit of a light and try and take a better look. So it looks like the sides were possibly lead as well and it's just all come apart. There's nothing now at this stage inside. And the other one then over there as well. And it's so sad to see them like this, and I'm presuming this window, the, the window over there, uh, would have been stained glass windows. And we have here then an iron door. I don't know whether that would have been the original, but it looks like there was a table or something there as well. But isn't it so sad to see, I mean, it's a great find, but so sad to see them in this state and the beautiful poems that were there on the, the statue, the effigy of her angel and it is sad. But as you can see over time there's no date on that but I will find anything I can online <coughs> to help. Now, so that's a sad ending those inside so rest in peace
the detail that was there, they're like little stones etched in. We have the vents there as well. And I think it's a flat, flat roof. But it is sad to see it like that now. And as you know, considering that's so open now, it's only going to get worse. And you can see that's all falling apart and crumbling away. But I'm surprised there's not um, any dates on it. Quite amazing. There is writing there. Sharply black pool cork. And I'm presuming that's the artist who would have designed this. Beautiful, beautiful energy of the angel. Right guys, so before I left there, I had to come and take a walk down along the cliffs here in Ardmore just to show you some of the scenery on the east coast, southeast coast of Ireland. And that up there is actually a watchtower and it's it's from the Napoleonic times and it's where it would have kind of warned of ships coming in but just look at that for a view and you can see the header that purple color is header growing along the cliffs and this walk goes all the way up there Curiosity has got the better of me and I've walked all the way down there just to have a look at this and I just think it was worth the walk and to bring you along with me. So this is it. Imagine it's still standing and as I said it was a, a watchtower and they overlooked the whole sea, I mean you can see for for miles and down there way out in the corner I was told that a man would stand with different flags to warn other corners, other areas that the French boats were coming.
Thanks for watching and God bless.